Ghana's public health system had been lacking many things, including emergency medical services. We had a national ambulance service that was pretty much broke. This was worrying. You get up, go to the office, just to turn away calls, because clients will definitely call you. We need an ambulance, and all you are sitting down doing is, we don't have an ambulance, we don't have an ambulance. The impact of this was catastrophic. Many lives were lost. Attempts to carry my chama on the motorbike to get him to Agogo, which is the next biggest uh, hospital. By the time they got to Agogo, the venom had trans traveled all the way to his heart. And so we lost him, unfortunately. It got to a point that uh, people actually um, started uh, not patronizing our services because they'll call and they'll have to wait for one hour. They'll have to wait for two hours and probably uh, the whole day and they won't even get the ambulance. Ghana certainly cannot meet the 2030 universal health coverage with this. As I, we went around from place to place, every place you go, the request will come, we need an ambulance, we need an ambulance, we need an ambulance. And it was a reflection of the fact that the National Ambulance Service had really um, virtually collapsed. And we needed to, to revamp it and make sure that we are not just buying ambulances which will continue to serve just a few areas, but the idea was to buy ambulances that will serve every constituency in this country. Pre-hospital care is very important because people either in an emergency fall sick or at home on the way um, and before a lot of things can happen before uh, the person gets to the hospital and that is extremely uh, an important uh, part of the care. President Ikufuado's solemn promise to revamp the National Ambulance Service was honored in January 2020. I'm really happy that finally this day has come to meet us. It is the day the Lord has made and we should rejoice in it. This ceremony is a very good way to begin the year. Ever since independence, we've never had 307 ambulances in the country. And this is international standard. Not those kind of ambulances that we used to buy in the country. It is an international standard. So as a woman under the ministry that procured this ambulance, I thank God and I also thank the president for giving me that opportunity because he has a vision and he asked me to implement it. The National Ambulance Service, led by Professor Ahmed Zakaria, had for years been waiting for a day like this. We have every reason to be very happy, not just because it has made our work easy, also the fact that it has helped improve the quality of care when you look at the pre-hospital emergency care services. Without these ambulances, Ghana's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic would have been disastrous. We, we, we transported about um, 1,130 cases. 1,130 COVID cases. And uh, at a point in time, I was just wondering if um, by, by any means these ambulances were not in, hmm. then this um, COVID situation, it would have been so disastrous. And yes, it has been a game changer. Going by our motto, timely care saves lives. Because when it happens, this time around, we are there on the spot because we have the resources available to us. Now, patients who are arriving here in ambulances, all of them, there is a prior notification to our centre here to inform the nurses and the doctors to be in readiness to see the patient. But some patients arrive here members are prepared for them and we know sometimes the operational diagnosis even on the ambulance or from the centers that they are coming with so that we prepare for their management uh, before they, they, they arrive here. 
and these are all translating in better outcomes. This is one major intervention the government is extremely excited about. I told the president on the days, Mr. President, tonight I will sleep. That is a key sort of expression that can language when you have become relieved of having solved a problem. You pause and say, hmm, tonight I will sleep. I thank God for, for, for giving Nana Akufuado this vision to bring all of this on board for this country because ultimately uh, you cannot put money on, the cost, on a life, right? You know, the life is precious and when you save a life, you have to thank God uh, for, for that happening. The men and women in the green uniform are appreciative to the government. I just want to say a very big thank you to the president for hearing our cry. After months of taking delivery of the 307 state-of-the-art ambulances, we take a journey to five regions. Greater Accra, Eastern, Ashanti, Northern and Upper East regions to access their impacts. Today, we are in the Eastern Regional Town of Esikim to meet Adelaide Uridua. Few weeks ago, this young woman nearly lost her 20-month-old son, Ezekiel Adams. Adelaide woke up together with her son one early morning. The driver thought he had run over an animal. He didn't know he had rather run over Ezekiel. A distress call from outside their house made Adelaide rush out just to find her baby in a pool of blood with deep gaping cut in his head and lips with blood oozing through his nose. Adelaide immediately took her son, put him in that same car straight to the Chibi government hospital. This was the moment the assistance of the National Ambulance Service was needed to help transport the boy to a bigger facility for advanced care. The emergency medical technicians moved with the speed of light to pick up the boy. Their swift response has been linked to the availability of ambulances in every constituency in the eastern region, which makes it possible to meet the one-hour golden rule. The research has shown that, for example, the best chances of survival definitely will be getting the patient into a hospital environment, getting the patient into theater, an operation room for that matter, and be able to work on the patient within the one hour. Beyond the one hour, the chances of survival begin to diminish. So no matter how much time you spend in the pre-hospital setting, normally you don't do much help to the patient as compared to moving the patient to the hospital. If you miss that one hour, if you are not very careful, the victim becomes a vegetable. If you miss it, that's the end. The state of her son made Adelaide conclude but for the National Ambulance Service, she would have lost him. In case of this experiment, 
So now ambulance ah. Doctor Bien will be referred to what's up help. I will big hospital. So yeah, no me no me no me say. Yeah, I put a person like I'm so that doctor Bien will be here for me. So we get taxi to go there. So I find ambulance there. Ezekiel's story is one of the 4,080 cases the ambulance service in the Easting region has attended to in the first eight months of receiving their share of the one constituency, one ambulance. We're having 18 ambulance stations in the region. And uh, after we received the new ambulances, we increased our I mean, uh, stations to 33 mm -hmm. in the region. So what it means is that we have more territories to cover this time round. And if you look, if you also compare the cases that we receive as against the previous I mean, uh, cases, in the months Sometimes we used to do averagely a hundred to 150 thereabouts. But sometimes we do receive more than 300 calls, let's say in a month. All ambulance stations across the country are attending to more patients now. The National Ambulance Service boss, Professor Ahmed Zakaria says, there's a reason for this. If you look at the number of cases that already have been attended to, if you take a five-year span from 2004 to about 2010, you will see that we attended to about 25 plus cases. Then from 2012 up to 2016, if you look at it, we attended to about 50 plus cases. But just in these nine months, we've attended to over 19,000. Okay, almost 20,000. So if you just even make this comparison without waiting for even four years, you will see the number of cases that have already been attended to within short, this short period of time. And that is explainable. One, you now have more ambulances, you have more ambulance stations, and therefore you have more cases that you are attending to. I've looked at some of the data uh, from the National Ambulance Service on the calls, you will see that in fact we, we had as um, a major decline over time of calls to the ambulance service because people knew that if you call you wouldn't get an ambulance anyway for the most part. So if you look at the data you will see a major decline in, in the calls to the National Ambulance Service for ambulances. But since uh, 2019 when you look at the data you see a major jump in the call. And this means that the ambulances are saving lives because as you respond to medical emergencies, uh, you are saving lives. With the Eastern region being one of Ghana's accident-prone regions, the one constituency one ambulance has come in handy. In an emergency or in a road traffic accident where there are injuries, the way people are managed is extremely important, how they are carried. For example, if you have uh, a fracture, if you are not, maybe just a crack, if you are not managed properly, they can complete the fracture. If you are not managed properly, the bones can be shifted somewhere else. If you have a back injury, you have to be carried in a very special way. The way you are carried is extremely important. If that is missed, you can also cause further damage even before you reach care. In the Ashanti region, one case that became very topical and has stayed with both paramedics and regional heads is how a pregnant woman carrying twins and in labor got saved. Ketsi, the National Ambulance Service. Setra from Plains District Chief Executive Joseph Jimfi Owusu first made that call to the National Ambulance Service on behalf of the distressed woman. Eventually, ambulance was dispatched but because of the road conditions, they cannot get into Fumsua town. So the locals had to devise a means to carry this pregnant woman on the back of a motorbike and bring her closer to the roadside. And if you walk through the video of when they were transferring her into the ambulance, 
it will amaze you. And on their way, the unexpected happened, as described by Somek Dude Melon, a Shanti Regional Administrative Manager of the National Ambulance Service. This woman was pregnant with twins, mm. and she actually delivered uh, in the ambulance, and uh, our emergency medical technicians were able to manage uh, help her and assist her to deliver the twins. So they, they, they managed her until they got to the um, hospital. So I when I was when the story came to my notice, I I I, I was like, so Im imagine this patient, uh, this particular woman was still on the motorbike. How bad would the situation have been? Because ambulances are available in all constituencies in the country today, the team did not hustle to dispatch one to assist her. No matter how, I mean, um, where the person is falling from, the number of calls you receive, you'll be able to, I mean, get to the people within the shortest possible time. And that really gives us satisfaction when it comes to our work. Because somebody is in need and you're able to reach out to the person and to give the person the help that the person needs. In fact, it's more fulfilling than any other thing that, I mean, we can offer to anybody. At the Confuanoche Teaching Hospital, a third of all admissions are brought in by the National Ambulance Service. At least 22 ambulances rushing patients to this referral facility every day. Maternal related cases are mostly part and the chief executive of the hospital, Dr. Hannibal Usu Danso, has observed something gratifying. In our media review uh, uh, conference this year, that is from January to the end of June, significantly, as against the trend for the last uh, three, four years, we have recorded, for instance, uh, a much uh, a lower maternal mortality. I mean, for, 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 for the first time in such a, a, a period. And the research and the data analysis is still ongoing. But we can imagine that the ambulance service is having an impact in that domain also. Studies suggest that pregnancy-related mortality is overwhelmingly due to delays. Health Minister Kwekwa Jimamenu says in Ghana, lack of ambulances to help was a factor. In the past, we were hearing people delivering in taxis. So if they are now delivering ambulances, it's a good sign. I mean, people will wait and wait and wait until the baby is just coming before they call an ambulance or they call an ambulance that wouldn't arrive in good time. So these things are normal things that happen in ambulances anyway. So if it's happening in an ambulance and it is not happening in the taxi now or in the Uber, I think that is a good, good, good plus for the government. Chief Executive of the National Ambulance Service, Professor Ahmed Zakaria, says helping patients and putting smiles on their faces is what they had been waiting for over the years. Our satisfaction is really in the fact that now we have the adequate resources, we have the equipment, and we have a more motivated staff. Because every staff will be excited that you have the tools to work with. But it will have been very demoralizing if you had all the knowledge but you don't have the equipment. And before you, a patient is dying and you are helpless. What is says about the president and MPP government that the president thinks about the, the health of the people? I just want to be magnanimous to tell Ghanaians the truth. The previous government didn't sleep about emergency preparedness. They were trying to bring ambulances. By virtue of their poor management systems, they couldn't. The ambulance team has attended to overwhelming cases in the Shanti region. We have about 40 nine ambulances now in the region you know um one it has given us um the luxury to to reduce our our response time in the northern region appreciation of the services of the emergency medical technicians are more profound beneficiaries recount what the repercussions would have been if every constituency there had no ambulance Let's first start with Mohammed Al Hassan, whose wife delivered at home while waiting for an ambulance. I was having unrest. I couldn't sit down till the ambulance arrived. Yeah. 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 Well, ambulance Before the ambulance arrived, mm -hmm. 
by then his wife delivered. After the delivery, the wife couldn't respond and she was bleeding. So the ambulance people brought out their stretcher from the ambulance and moved into the room that the wife and they picked my the wife on the their stretcher and pushed him to the ambulance. Mohammed recalls exactly what the team did to revive his wife before they got to the hospital. Before the ambulance arrived, I went to the, he went to the room and touched the wife and he couldn't, he couldn't see any life from the wife. But when the ambulance people picked the wife into the ambulance and started giving him the pro-hospital care, he realized somewhere along the line had their intervention. He saw the wife to revive, responded to their treatment. Mm. So he appreciated the ambulance personnel and he believed that if they were not intervened like they did, he would have lost the wife. This young man, Abu Bakr Sadiq, who survived a recent road traffic accident, shares his experience with the ambulance service. When we get land, the guy just crashed me and lined out. They were just, people were just surrounding the, one of them decided to call the ambulance. When they called the ambulance, less than five minutes, they were there. So they picked me to the hospital first and they attended to me and dressed me and gave me some medicines to cure me. The way I was bleeding, if they were not able to attend, I think I knew I would have collapsed them. Because the blood was turning back to my head. I was bleeding through my nose and the eyes, so it was turning back. I think if it would have not come, I would have got the problem there. Nyaba Al Hassan Nayeli and his wife dialed the 112 emergency number, and within 15 minutes, they arrived to pick his wife, who was carrying twins to the Tamale Teaching Hospital. We feel good because otherwise, we should uh, get problems with it. So we feel good. So they, they have done well for us. They all survived. In the past, they would have been part of Ghana's maternal mortality figures. The main cause of maternal mortality is delay. And we have three delays. Delay in seeking health care. Mm -hmm. Delay in assessing health care. And then delay in receiving health care. So my main concern is the second Delay, the second delay, which is delay in assessing healthcare. Now, delay in assessing healthcare after the patient has taken the decision to go to hospital, it is now the responsibility of the ambulance to transport. So now the means of transport now is the ambulance. So because of that, it helps to reduce maternal mortality drastically mm -hmm. in the region. All these have been possible because in the northern region, ambulance stations have increased from 7 to 18, leading to improved response time. It is therefore not surprising the call center in this region receives 5 to 20 calls on a daily basis. You can have a district that can have two ambulances, depending upon the number of constituents. For example, if you take Tamale Metro, we have Tamale Central, and then the Tamale South. That means that they are benefiting two ambulances. If you go to Sanargo district, Tamale North is there, and then Sanargo constituency is also there. That means that they are benefiting two ambulances there. So with this, with the introduction of these constituencies ambulances, it has come to help our response time. Even at the chips compound, at the lower level, at the uh, local uh, traditional birth attendants, everywhere you find a maternal case where there are challenges and the patient needs to be referred, immediately the ambulance service is called. And so obviously if you look at even with that concept, it's going to improve the maternal mortality tremendously. In their neighboring region, the Upper East, the revived ambulance service is responding to especially road traffic accidents involving mostly tricycles and motorbikes. Abuni Ali Baba, the Upper East Regional Administrator of the National Ambulance Service, 
recounts how helpless they were in times they lacked vehicles. All you could do is, yes, if we are at the scene when it happens, then you could give basic first aid. But definitely you have to put them into a moving vehicle. That is, if the vehicle is prepared to pick it, or this uh, motor king, and then let them carry the person to the hospital. That was what now, with the 15 ambulances in the region, they are able to attend to any case from any corner of the region. In the month of October alone, they were able to attend to some 117 cases. If you look inside this vehicle, you get to realize that if you don't deliver, then you don't qualify to wear the uniform. Because in those days, we used to turn cases away, blamed it on Powers Airb. Fortunately, or fortunately on our part, now the vehicles are in. And so if we are not able to deliver, then that means it is now on us and not whosoever was supposed to provide the vehicle. I remember just recently I told uh, an anesthetist that don't be disturbed, don't fall as if what we are giving you is not the best. Because we are taking you to Tamale with the keys, yes. Leave whatsoever you have there, come in here and you have a moving theater to move it. So we have everything and anybody who goes for a case and comes back, comes back smiling. That is very true. The ambulances are indeed a moving theater. And that's why even COVID, we've been looking at uh, probably using some of them to resuscitate those who may need uh, ventilation. So there are many, many gadgets within that helps us in helping you to resuscitate in terms of uh, defibrillators and everything are all in that system and that is what makes it a state-of-the-art ambulance service. Not just a vehicle, but more like a, a hospital, a mini hospital on wheels. Today, we followed the EMT team to the Bogatanga Government Hospital, where an accident victim needs to be moved to a specialized facility in Boku. The survival of an accident victim largely depends on how they are handled at the accident scene. At the level of the neck, there is the cervical spine. So what happens is that if a patient gets an accident and the patient develops cervical spine injury, and you don't handle the patient well, the patient can go into respiratory arrest and die on the spot. And that's why some die on the spot. The other thing is, if you have the lumbar spine also being affected, the patient can be paralyzed. Mm. So that's why they, they always advise that when there's an accident, it's always advisable to get the professionals to handle the patient. Because sometimes patients may survive the accident, but die as a result of the handling. The other thing is extrication of the patient from the vehicle. Sometimes the patient is trapped in the vehicle. Some of the body parts might have been stuck to parts of the vehicle. And so in pulling the patient, you are likely to even damage the, some of the internal organs. This is one of the packages the National Ambulance Service offers. The care of an emergency patient is a continuum. The outcome, whether you live or you die or you get permanent disability, depends on what happens in the pre setting and then the interventions that are made and the timely transfer to the definitive care facility. So I can say that without these ambulances, people would have suffered severe disability and sometimes death. In the greater Accra region, the demand for ambulance is very high. The emergency medical technicians, like their colleagues in other parts of Ghana, work 24 hours a day and seven days in a week to meet the demands of their clients. Averagely, they attend to 30 cases a day. They drive with the speed of light to transport patients to facilities like the Greater Accra Hospital. Today, we meet 38-year-old patient Gudu, a patient on admission here. She nearly lost her life, but for the availability of an ambulance in her constituency. Patients woke up one morning to the sight of blood while carrying a six-month-old pregnancy. We shall be hearing from her soon. But let's first speak to the team from the National Ambulance Service who attended to her. EMT Christopher Asari led the team that day. She had a um, abrosio placenta. When you hear abrosio placenta, it um, simply means um, 
the placenta has detached, detached from, separated from the womb or uterus. So that one, you need agent um, attention or must be transport from that hospital to the higher hospital, either for, to raise the patient or to do caesarean section for the patient. So when we went there, we do our assessment and everything, and they said they are referring the case from Trobo Hospital to Rich Hospital. Patient was not only bleeding, she was also dealing with excruciating lower abdominal pain. In spite of this, she was still conscious and saw how she was treated in the ambulance. They treat me like a hospital. Mm -hmm. So I like the way they treat me. They didn't put me in the ambulance that, like that. They treat me well, like I'm in the hospital before I came here. So when we are coming here, the car is um, broken away. We are talking to them that it's a major so it should give you a chance to come. So the way they do to me in the ambulance, I like it. Principal Advanced Emergency Medical Technician Daniel Asari is a Greater Accra Regional Administrator of the National Ambulance Service. They feel happy when lives are saved. We the EMTs we work very hard 24-7 to make sure that we save lives as soon as possible. So we most of the time get such cases. We are much excited when we hear a good news that after the intervention we give to the patient in the ambulance are yielded a positive result. We are, when we share this story during our uh, CPD, that's continuous professional development uh, training, it gives the EMTs morale so that it energizes them to work hard so that they can save more life as possible. Initially, some people thought the ambulance would not be bought in the country. When we mentioned it, even at cabinet, uh, parliament, we, 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 we mentioned that there was going to be ambulances procured in the country. People said no, we could not do it because we know we have doubting Thomases in the country. And when we even started bringing the ambulance, some people said they were not even up to the number. They were not even up to 50. But lo and behold, that day we commissioned 307 ambulances. And as we speak, all the 275 constituencies have ambulance each running every day in the constituency. Patience has a baby girl now, but for the National Ambulance Service, she thinks she might have lost her. When I'm there, they say, uh, I came here. They say one of the a lady, they want to brought in here. They want to call the doc, uh, ambulance, but they don't, they don't call ambulance. They brought the car. Before they came here, the baby was dead. So I told them that it's better for them to call the ambulance. If the way ambulance people help me, if not the ambulance people, this baby will not come out. So if you need the ambulance, you can call them. We want to assure the public that anytime there's an emergency, they should call the 112. And once they call the 112, we will come and save them as soon as possible. National Ambulance Service boss, Professor Ahmed Zakaria, wonders what would have happened to the country in the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic if the 307 ambulances were not in. That's one of the success stories the country can boast of. Because if you didn't have an efficient system to contain and be able to move these cases and avoid them from mixing with the general public, our cases might be, would have even been worse. Because you can imagine if you have attended to and contained over 3,000. Imagine all these 3,000 will have had to go into various facilities through public means. You could have just seen the ripple effect. But being able to even respond at this time, we are very happy. It has saved the country a lot. That's why you see that even the numbers in the country that are being affected by coronavirus is not that huge for us because as com compared to other countries, we've been able to manage and it is because of this ambulance. Health Minister Kwekua Jimamenu has data to support the work the ambulances did in the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic. The ambulances, as I speak, have carried close to 3,000 COVID cases in our country. You know what COVID is. People wouldn't want COVID people to come into their vehicles. The initial stigmatization until now that we are getting over it. So without the ambulances, I sit back and ask myself, how could we have managed this ambulance thing? 
was God's intervention to our president and now to Uncle Kufado. Some people, we including me, have said in some occasions that the president was a blessing to this country. And when he talks about the matters of the Lord, it's a manifestation of how the good Lord is fighting the battle for us. Not only fixing the economy, but helping us manage the pandemic the way we have done so. Right? Assessments across the globe indicate that Ghana, the way we've managed COVID, we rank the first in Africa. And third, across the globe, is phenomenal. Vice President is not only excited about the lives being saved, but also the jobs these new fleet of ambulances have created. The ambulances, uh, as you know, you know, you, you, will, you will have to, each of them ha has a driver, each of them has two paramedics and, and so on. And all of these have had to be recruited. Uh, and, and therefore, definitely there is job creation in there, um, but you are, you are creating the jobs to save lives. With the coming in, there was recruitment of 1,400 plus staff because we had recruitment to, we had uh, financial clearance to recruit the first 550. After them, we had another recruitment to, another financial clearance to recruit 900. So if you just look at even with that, it means that you've created jobs for over 1,000 people and that itself is a plus on its own. The government is requesting another four-year term from Guineans to revolutionize the health sector. I'm not sure, I'm not sure for now in the country we have any leader like His Excellency Nana Rodankwa Akufuadu, bold, decisive and visionary. They are working towards procuring another hundred next year, right? If we follow another hundred the following year, and that is how we may want to build on, saying that we don't go back to a situation we find ourselves in when we inherited. We want to, of course, build upon what we have done uh, or what we are doing. Uh, we have to protect what we are doing, build upon it and do more. Of course, we are not where we ought to be yet. We want to see uh, healthcare um, more accessible. There are many districts that don't have hospitals. We have Agenda 111 which means one district, one hospital. So there's a lot more that we want to do. We want to focus a lot on telemedicine, use technology to do telemedicine, and that is going to be a focus uh, for us in our next term, God willing.